Why, hello, hello, hello! Welcome, welcome to Voice of the Rings. I'm your hosting guide, Zolid Iron Shield. I hope you're having a great and wonderful day in Middle Earth. Happy Tolkien Reading Day, my friends. So today I've got a special fun event for you guys. We are going to explore the world of Middle Earth through the books, going through the Lord of the Rings online. And I have an interactive fun thing for you guys to do today, okay? So real quick intro, um, we're gonna be going through the lands of Middle-earth, again, in the Lord of the Rings online. If you don't know what that is, it's so excited for you today to see Middle-earth through the Lord of the Rings online. Um, but we're gonna do some fun things, it's interactive. If you're watching this later, as a video, or if you want to do it along while I do the stream, if you're here live, welcome. Um, I'm going to have spots. I'm going to go explore certain locations. Oh, we're going to see Bag End. We're going to see uh, Edoras. We're going to see all these different places. And you guys can pause the video, read about it in the book. Okay, this is what I encourage you to do for fun. Read about the story, and then let's see how Middle Earth came to life and how the creators of uh, Lord of the Rings Online brought it to life. Okay, from page to 3D dimensional world of Middle Earth in Lord of the Rings Online. So that's what we're gonna do today. Welcome again, I am your hosting guide, Zolan Iron Shield, and we're gonna go straight into it today, my friends. Welcome everyone to the stream. This will be a blast. And thank you to all my viewers and subscribers who said, why don't we do a stream for Tolkien Stream Day? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Um, also, let's us, let me flip over here to Lord of the Rings Online so you can see the beautiful stuff in the background. You're hearing rain. Well, there it is, my friends, right there. In fact, all right. I actually, uh, let me flip over my camera here real quick. Ba -bum -ba -dum. Oh, I love the music in this game. It's glorious. It's absolutely the best. All right. I hope you guys are having a great day. Then again, welcome, welcome everyone, one and all. All right. There we are. Ha ha! All right. Welcome to Middle Earth, you guys. We're here in Bag End in the Lord of the Rings. But right before I start, shout out to our playlist today. We do have some people who put together a playlist. A lot of us were really busy this year, so um, it, we weren't able to get everybody on the playlist if you're going to ask me that later in the comments. Um, but we do have some, and I just want to shout them out right now real quick and show you real quick. So we have our playlist here. Whoop! All right, for Tolkien Reading Day, and shout out again to this is the channel we have it on, but and put people who put it together, Elf Friend and Brothers Crin. All right, so you can check out their channels. I'll link all that and the playlist in the description. Thank you to them. So today, my friends, we're going to travel through Middle Earth. I don't want to make it too long for everyone, especially people here who are here new. This game is rather big. You can really see a lot in this game, okay? Um, but we want to make this a reasonable fun time. And we're going to try we're going to use something called fast travel if you're brand new to Lord of the Rings online, which means we're going to travel to certain locations quicker than if we just walked or rode our horse the whole way through the game. I love this game. It is one of the ultimate video games of all time for the Lord of the Rings. Yes, I said it. In fact, I would argue it's the best one. Now, in lore, when it comes to lore. By the way, look at that rainbow. Is that not gorgeous or what? We're in the Shire. It is the evening. It just finished raining in the game. Um, I love the rain. So it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, but uh, there are many other wonderful Lord of the Rings games, mind you. Tons. You know, the Two Towers, Turn of the King game, Battle for Middle Earth, Shadows of Mordor, even though that one's not super lore friendly. But it's super fun and awesome, no matter what. Um, but the Lord of the Rings Online has some of the best lore of all time. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over to Bag End. I'm just going to walk you over there real quick. And we're going to start by doing the first little interactive thing with you guys today, okay? So if you're watching later as a video or you're here live, I am going to read out the first page or basically the description of Bag End, okay, from The Hobbit. Now, later, you're going to have to bring out the Fellowship Book or Two Towers Return of the King for the descriptions and information of other places we're going to go. I'm not going to read every single one in the stream today because it would turn into a three-hour, four-hour stream. And I know that a lot of you are just visiting my channel. You probably don't have time for that. But I'm really happy you guys are here. And again, don't forget, throw a like and subscribe. Maybe what's your favorite thing? A comment. There is Bywater. A lot of people don't know that uh, Hobbit or Bag End, which is right up there, you can see at the top of the hill with the big tree, um, actually is above Bywater. When they go to the Green Dragon, all right, 
um, they actually go down to Hobbiton, which is down the road. Down that road. All right. So um, we'll walk in here to Bag Ed. Welcome, everyone, to the stream. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so actually, the inn that is in Bywater Hobbiton is what it's called. All right. Is actually called the Inn Bu the Ivy Bush Inn. All right. Um, and again, a lot of these are named after spots in the Tolkien went in, you know, London and England and all the places he went. Because um, I don't know if you guys remember the Inklings, right? Awesome. Anyway, it's pretty cool. I could go on for a long time, but let's keep focused on our mission here today. And we are going to check out Bag End. So, and real quick, what I normally do on my channel is we do a lot of content through the Lord of the Rings Online MMO here. Lord, Lord of the Rings Online. <laughs> I just said. Um, but also, I do some more stuff. And pretty much, we're a, to a channel based on Tolkien and being positive and having fun. All right? So, I'm sure my regular viewers can attest to that. All right, you guys. Here is Bag End. All right? This is the Bag End rendition from the uh lord of the rings online perspective it is gorgeous all right this is my horse by the way um you can see it's actually just evening just dusk in the game you can see the beautiful clouds going over and um and if you're someone who's been wanting to play a game like this this game is going through a great time right now it's kind of almost a revival of the game they've been doing massive graphical updates texture updates it's really exciting if you're a gamer um, we also do gaming on this channel, but I also do lore stuff and all sorts of other things. So, yeah, throw a subscribe on there if you would. I'd appreciate it greatly. Baruch Hazan, Kuzan, I menu. All right. So, now, my friends, as you enjoy this beautiful view of Bag End right here, I would like to bring up for you The Hobbit. And we are going to read the first part of The Hobbit. All right. So, let's bring this up. Badoo! There it is. All right. And I'm going to read it to you right now. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole, filled with the ends of worms and oozy smell. Nor a yet dry, bare, sandy hole, with nothing in it to sit down or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. It had a perfectly round door, like a porthole, painted green, with a shiny yellow brass knob in the exact middle. The door opened on a tube-shaped hall like a tunnel. A very comfortable tunnel without smoke. With panels, walls, and floors tiled and carpeted, provided with polished chairs, lots and lots of pegs for uh, hats and coats, the, the Hobbit was fond of visitors. All right. The tunnel would go on and on, going fairly, uh, but not quite straight into the side of the hill, as the people far for many miles around called it. And many little round door opened, on um, excuse me, opened out of it first, first on the side, and then the other side. Not no going upstairs for hobbits, bedrooms, bathrooms, cellars, pantries. Lots of these wardrobes and the whole room uh, devoted to clothes, kitchens, dining rooms, all were on the same floor. And indeed, on the same passage, the best rooms were on the left hand side going in. For these were the only to have windows, deep set, round windows looking over his garden and the meadows beyond sloping down the river. All right, my friends. So we're just going to go to there for now. Um, but it's pretty fun. Let me uh, get off that. But now we're going to explore it. Okay? So now, again, I encourage you, for fun, if watching after the stream or as a video later, when we go through these, we're going to go to certain locations. I'm going to teleport to them. Do a little pause and read about the spot. I'll tell you where we're going, you know, in the books. And then um, you can just look it up if you have a digital file of the book or something like that. You can find them usually online. Um, or you can sometimes buy them off audiobooks, right? Like if you like, I'm not sponsored by any audiobook. But um, those are kind of good. You can kind of search through them. Um, and find the different locations, right, as we go through. It'll be really, really fun. Anyway, welcome everyone to the stream. And so um, some of you just hopped in. So we'll continue to explore here. So we see we have, this is the living room area. Hopefully that was, uh, I was trying to read while I walked my character through the game, so hopefully that worked pretty good. 
We have a little reading study with some beautiful maps of Middle Earth, Eriador, right? And then we go right over here, again, the entryway with all the massive amounts of hangers and lights and again, it's really uh, quite, quite intricate here. And in the time of the Lord of the Rings Online, you may be asking me, well, Zolan, where do they place the Lord of the Rings Online? Like, in the timeline. The Lord of the Rings Online starts right before the beginning of the Fellowship book, okay? Um, in theory, if you start as a dwarf or elf, you start way before that in the intro. But then when you get into the actual world server, which is where everyone else plays, it's an MMO, so you can see, play with all your friends, right? We're on the server Crick Hollow, by the way. If you want to start the game and you want to join us and play with us, we do have a certain set date here on our kinship, separate from my channel, but works together a lot. Um, feel free to play with us on the server Crick Hollow if you join the game. But um, it's really, really awesome. And uh, it's set right before the Fellowship, basically, is when you start playing your character in the story. Um, and then when you finish that, there is an expansion that sets a little bit before that. It's called the shadows something later and you kind of go backwards to kind of explore some of the stuff that happened with the ring race looking for the hobbits and stuff like that but pretty much it starts right before the um that uh the fellowship book and then moves through all the books and now if you get to the end of the game or your max level in the story we're actually helping aragorn and arwen as king and queen of gondor into the appendices of the fourth age of the end of the return of the king book so that's where we are in the story right now um, in Lord of the Rings Online. Gorgeous, beautiful, awesome. So here, let's go to the top real quick of the hill here so you guys can kind of see, because I know a lot of you that are brand new are like, well, we want to see things. So this is nighttime in the game. Unfortunately, in this case, when I did the stream, there's a day and night cycle in the game every couple hours. It's not day and night depending on a certain time zone in real life. It's an added, um, there's sectional times. It ends up being a few hours between day, night cycle, day, night cycle. There's a whole thing on it. I have a whole video on that. Um, I do guides on this game too, and guides on other games, as well as lore videos, walkthroughs, and voiceovers, which we're not gonna do today, but that is a big part of Voice of the Rings here, my channel, we do voiceovers. So there's the moon. If you actually wanna see behind Bag End, you guys, there's actually a forest right behind Bag End. So it's kind of gives you a nice perspective of this game. Um, if you're that person who's always wanted to walk into Middle Earth from the movies, like I was since I was a small child when the movies came out, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I wish I could just walk around in Middle Earth for hours and explore. Well, this is the game for you. <laughs> Not to mention it's very fun gameplay in my personal opinion if you're a fan of more classic MMOs and also Leptro's really been doing a lot of big updates. There's a lot of fun stuff even for newer players possibly you're someone who doesn't usually play classic MMOs. There's some cool stuff you like too. Um, so anyway, let us go to the next place. So I'm going to use some special teleports here and we're going to teleport to Bree. So the first spot we're going to see is Bree. So if you're someone who would like to um, follow along, right here is where you would pause it, read about Bree, and then we'll explore a little bit. Okay. So we're going to basically explore Bree at night, which is fine because there's lots of lights. So this is technically Southbury. In the books, they came through the Southern Fields. Now, I'm going to follow a little bit more of the movie style here, and I know a lot of people are going to get me for this right now, um, but I do have another more in-depth following the books video and stream from the past. Um, technically, the Hobbits stay at Buckland, right? Um, Crick Hollow, the server's name, say <laughs> the name of where we actually are on our server, but there's a location called Crick Hollow. It was actually Bilbo's house for about a few years, right, in the books and the Fellowship before he left. And Fatty Bulger, you know, is kind of, it takes his spot. And in fact, why don't we go see Crick Hollow real quick? I think we're gonna see it. I decided just now. We're doing what books today, do we're not you? doing movies. All right, so we're gonna go over to Westbury. Technically, this is Southbury. So this is where they left when they headed off to uh, the, uh, through the marshes to Weathertop with Ar uh, Aragorn, right? Uh, the hobbits so i'm going to show you so up that road is prancing pony we will see that in a moment but let's check out crick hollow real quick i can get there pretty fast how can i be of using service? these little teleports here and in fact uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to take a normal course because there's not swift travel but that's okay it'll only take a second this is the greenway if you're a fan of uh the books and knowing all the information 
The Greenway is a passageway between the Shire and Breeland. Okay, so they are different locations. The Shire, again, they had wonderful maps in Lord of the Ring on the Solemn Line. Oh, such wonderful maps. All right, so we have the Shire to Breeland. All right, so um, the Greenway is this passage here, and Buckland is technically in Breeland, okay? Buckland is technically not in the Shire. All right, so, and you guys remember Buckleberry Ferry? Right? Buckleberry Ferry actually crosses right down here. There's an actual spot. It shows it right here. Um, let me just close my camera for a second. If you look here at the bottom of the two roads cross the river, that is Buckleberry Ferry. So you can see it right there when I hover this little flag. It says Buckleberry Ferry, really tiny. Um, and then, of course, the bridge is up here. Now, of course, in the game, they can't quite make the scale of Middle Earth, but I'd like to point out the Lord of the Rings Online. Without me, I don't want to overdaunt any new players, right? They want to play it. There's lots of ways to get around with maps that teleport you and horse rides that teleport you quickly and all this stuff. Um, but it is one of the biggest video games of all time. And, and that's not an exaggeration. Like the only games that are actually larger in scale, okay? So of the whole game are like Minecraft and No Man's Sky. You know, even know what those are? Those are infinitely generating games. They infinitely generate more and more land as you travel. So that's the only reason they're bigger. So Lord of the Rings Online is easily one of the biggest, if not the biggest MMO or video game in area to travel of all time. There are so many places you can see. You can see from, you know, Eriador and Thorin's Hall to the Shire, up to Evendim and the Numenos, right? The capital of um, the fall. It's a fallen capital at the time of the game, though. But it's beautiful still to see. Um, Forichel, which is kind of the northern area, I always like to call it the Alaska of Middle Earth. It's really up there in the corner, really cold. The, the big Great Bay. You can go to Fornost and uh, North Downs and see all these cool places. Angmar, Karn Doom, all right. Rivendell, the Trollshaws, down to Swan Fleet. Weather top in the Lowlands, which we're going to see in a minute. All right, we're going to see uh, that area. Uh, we will definitely check out Weather top in the night. And see it; it's pretty cool. Um, and then you know Moria down the D uh, to, to Dunland and Isengard, all the way over into the Misty Mountains. And we travel to Ronovanian. You can go to Lothlorien, Gundabad, Erebor, Iron Hills, all the places in uh, pretty much in Mirkwood and Legolas's realm. Right, Lake Town, all that down south. You can go to all parts of Rohan. Bangorn, Helm's Deep, Edoras. We will definitely be checking out Edoras and Helm's Deep in this stream today. Um, and of course, you can see the Argonoth, all that stuff, down into Gondor, where you got all of South Gondor now, Western Gondor, Central Gondor, Eastern, all these places. Dol Amroth, one of my favorite places in the stories, which you don't see in the movies. And so there's a lot of stuff that's really more based off the books in this game. Um, Mordor, lots of areas in Mordor, Mount Doom. The, where you can see where the, no spoilers, the eye was destroyed later in the story of the game. The eye is there early on, right, if you're playing a new character. Um, and then we just had recently added Harad, uh, the, um, Haradwaith, right, near Harad. And we have Umbar, the city of Umbar, and the Shield Islands. It's really cool. So anyway, the game is huge. It's massive. And if I walked from the top of the Shire down to, um, you know, Umbar or somewhere in Mordor. Yes, you can walk to Mordor. You're like, wait, but that's impossible. No, you can walk to Mordor. Yeah, so basically it's it's crazy. It's, it's a big, wonderful, amazing game. So even if you're someone that's not gonna get into just playing hardcore, like as in from the gaming perspective, you just wanna explore the world, um, you can do that. Now, there are some ways you can level up quickly if you wanna keep safely get to places, but or you can, you know, subscribe and watch my channel. I do lots of uh, tour episodes as well in this game. So here is Crick Hollow. This was Frodo's house for a while. Um, as you can see, here is uh, Fredger Bulger, right? I, a lot of people call him, I say a little different usually, but I'm um, sounding it out there. But uh, he is the one that kind of takes Frodo's place, and pretends like he's Frodo to help him against the ring race. And you can see here the ring race broke in this house, right? And again, Crick Hollow is the name of this location and Buckland is house. And that, again, that is the server we play on. So there's many servers, Lord of the Rings Online, like Dimensions. From a world video game perspective, we play on Crick Hollow, our, our kinship. I do play on other ones too, occasionally, just so everyone knows if you're from a different server. They're all awesome, but. All right, so now that you've seen this, this is Buckland. Let's look at Buckleberry Ferry real quick. 
And now that we've kind of done a fun little intro and I've talked about everyone we're here watching later as a video, I will say hi to everyone in the live stream. Welcome to everybody who is here, my friends. Uh, yes. Uh, what's up? Peasant says in live chat, not too demanding on computers either. No, that is something that is a wonderful boon to this game. This game actually looks extremely nice um, on a very strong computer, but even if you, it looks pretty good even on a computer that, you know, without insulting anyone, if you have a toaster for a computer, which I did for many years, so I understand, um, it will run on that. <laughs> It's not a game that you're going to have to chill out an insane amount of money to play. Also, one of the best free-to-play games out there, okay? So I will point that out as well, which is unusual for a game of its uh, when it came out. That wasn't really a thing back then when the game came out. So Lord of the Rings Online has always been a pioneer of the free-to-play system being a fun free-to-play system, right? Where it's not like you're just being nickel and dimed every three seconds. So I do highly recommend it. Um, it's a great game. And again, I'm not sponsored, but I love the game. And so I highly recommend it to everybody. So here's Buckleberry Ferry. This is where the Nazgul, technically on the movie where they jumped on the boat, they were on the other side in the Shire um, to get across, okay? And uh, you can see there's some fish there in the river swimming around. But it's a pretty cool little spot, very pretty. And then this is technically um, the Buckland manor i believe it's called let me double check and this is the really big hobbit hole brandy hall this is technically where um you know mary was from which i believe mary is technically a cousin of frodo right distant or something in the books from what i remember um so he took they took in frodo for a while too but as you can see the beautiful night flowers and all this stuff but now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to Breland. And again, it is nighttime, so you can't quite see as far at night, but you can technically the bridge is just right there. You can just make out the bridge. Now, again, like I was saying, even though the game is so big, the distances aren't as technically big as the book, right? Because Middle Earth is not a small place, guys. We're talking like Europe, right? It's not a small place. There's a lot in, in the in between the, all those lines. So um, I'm going to take a fast Three trouble games. I talk to uh, the Forsaken Inn, which is close to, yes, which we're gonna give, we're gonna get a nice look at Weathertop. So, um, yes, so anyway, oh, you know what I just realized? Hold on, before we do that, I didn't show you guys the Prancing Pony. We have to see the Prancing Pony. We're gonna walk through Bree first, okay? So, you already read the part of in your book, you already took that out and read about Bree, I'm going to give you a little walk through tour here at Bree. Oh, those are bushes. So again, this is the market area in the game. We have the jail here on the left, which is very cool. Yes, you can go inside. All right. Um, there's the town hall. This is the beautiful area and location. And man, the game looks good even at night. Like, it's a really beautiful game. I love how, like, there's lights coming out of the windows and everything's glowing. It's just really, really cool. So... And also welcome uh, Lord Kev and everyone else in the live stream. Andreas, sorry, I've been very focused on this. Usually when I do my live streams, I'm a little more chatty with the live stream. So hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. We're having a blast today. So this is another part of the market area. There's a crafting hall. This is the market square. Technically the other one was the auction hall area. And if you go right up here along the road, we will get to the Prancing Pony. All right, so here is the the market gate. There's a little tiny theater here, which is kind of cool. Um, a lot of times there's people playing music right here. All right, so um, there is an in-game music system that's fantastic. There's actually a, an event, the, um, the weather uh, top the Weatherstock, I think is what they call it, music event. It's usually on the server Lander Ball, not my server. But I pop on my alt and I go watch it because it's awesome. They have a bunch of big bands and stuff. Um, but it's an amazing music system. But there it is. There is the Prancing Pony. So if you want to pause, you know, or whatever, or if you're here live, that's okay too. And pull out the, the book and read about the Prancing Pony. Now let's look at the Prancing Pony. All right, so if we go in here. There's a spot right here, and then we can go in this front door. There's a little shed area for all the horses. 
And just like ever, if we see any water in this game, I'm going to compliment how much better it looks than it used to. It uses the new DirectX 11 whatever thing for the water. And um, I always have a little ongoing joke with my usual subscribers that I'm always like, man, look at that water. So they want me to make a shirt with that. So I, I understand it. It's pretty hilarious. So And Brody also is very excited. You heard him in the background. So this is the Prancing Pony. Um, here is Barlamin Butterbur, everyone's favorite barkeep. Um, great guy. This is their rendition and look of him. I think it's good. He looks a little different than the um, uh, than the movie, but if you read the book and then look at him, it, it's a pretty good rendition of what he looks like in the book. So there's some dwarves right here, and then you can see we have a bunch of other people and hobbits. The people just chilling out and relaxing on a beautiful evening here at the Prancing Pony Inn. And Mego Vonnen to everyone here in live in the live stream. Mego Vonnen indeed. All right. Well, uh, and Vixen, hello. Welcome. Yes, thank you for welcoming everyone. And Durin the D Seventh is here in the live stream. I'm honored to have Durin here. All right, Roving Ranger, what's up? Andreas, all right, and Tolkien Patriot, what's up, everybody? Say hi to everybody real quick there, guys. I've been very focused. <laughs> anyway, again, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, let's go check out the next area. So, uh, the Prancing Pony technically has a bunch of rooms back here. It's pretty big. Um, there's a little kitchen right here, and then there's an upstairs area. There's some rooms back here. Um, and some sleeping quarters up along here where you'll actually come and meet Aragorn and you'll also come and meet Gandalf in one of these rooms. I believe Aragorn's that room and I think Gandalf is normally in this room. You have to have the corresponding quest usually, but let's see, can I go in? Oh, I can't, but Gandalf is in here because he's busy. At the time of my character being almost max level at this point in the game, um, they just had a new expansion recently uh, with Umbar, which is really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and teleport ourselves back to the Bree Gate and we're gonna go to Weathertop and we'll see Weathertop in the distance at night. It's pretty cool actually still. Um, and again, if you're someone who wants some of these tours and see it in the daytime, I do tons on this channel, tons. I have many playlists which I organize and try to keep really nice for you guys. So if you're someone who just feels like getting overwhelmed, go check out my playlists later. And uh, I, I usually keep stuff very organized, even what though I have a lot I of videos. What can I do for you? All right. Um, all right. Ooh, I want to go here to the Lone Lands. Not to be confused with the Low Lands. Lone Low. So the L O W, Low Lands, is actually just south of Thorns Hall in the Blue Mountains, or Erd Lewin. Um, and the Lone Lands is where Weathertop is and it's on the way to the Troll Shaws in Rivendell. All right, the Troll Shaws is where Mr. Bibble's trolls are, which I think might be fun to see today. So again, uh, this one is gonna be a regular travel, not a fast travel. So this is called a regular travel where basically you can just travel around the world and see things. Um, they do not have swift travel to the Forsaken Inn. Some places do, some places don't. Most large locations have fast swift travels. So you can get around very quickly. But it's still kind of fun to see. So this is basically kind of where Aragorn took the four hobbits after they left when the Ring Race were looking for them in, you know, Breeland and in Bree, the city of Bree. Um, you, get, there's not a, you can't really see it super great because again, it's nighttime. Um, and that again was not my choice. I did not realize when I scheduled the time of the stream. I scheduled it thinking about my European friends and my viewers at a time that would be good for all of them. Because usually I have to stream in the morning being on the west coast of the United States. Because if it's like 10 my time when I start the stream, then for Europe, you know, it's somewhere between 8 p.m. Or, or yeah, 8 p.m. to like midnight. So it's more reasonable for my European friends then. Um, and then I have a lot of friends, you know, from, uh, you know, the ones from Mexico and Canada, they're pretty much on the same as me up to the East Coast that I have to think about, right? And, and North America in general. But uh, my friends over in Australia and other, in that other part of the world, I'm sorry if it's the middle of the night. <laughs> I have one very dedicated subscriber and, and kinsman in our group. And uh, he gets on at like 4 a.m. from Australia to play with us in the morning, which is impressive. I, I appreciate that. 
All right, let me see. Let me. Well, while we're going through Middle Earth, you can. So we're on our way. So let me show you the map so you kind of know where we are, guys. So we have Migwater Marsh, which is this area here. Let me close off. You can see where that little red triangle in the bottom right traveling down the road. Um, so we're leaving the, the town of Bree here, the Breeland. Okay, so that's where we just where we walked up the street. Again, the map system is fantastic in this game. And we're traveling here into the lowlands, the Forsaken Inn and Weathertop. Okay, so we're just going to kind of give a look at Weathertop. I would walk all the way to Weathertop, but since it's nighttime, if you got to the top of it, the view is just down to the edges of the valley here. You can't really see out the entire area. So we're just going to look at it, the beautiful spot. And again, feel free. If you're a regular viewer and subscriber here, if you want to join us, I have lots of daytime streams and views in the day of this game to see these places but here we go let me go ahead and see if we can get a nice view of weather top so this is called the forsaken inn right here um it has a hole in the roof yes it does um it's a nice little place but we're gonna skip that because i want to keep our time moving here so as you can see you can kind of see the first uh weather top from here but we're gonna get a little closer so you guys can actually have a good view and by the way, the music, oh, the music in this game, you guys. You know, I know I'm praising this game a lot, but there's a reason for that. This game is extremely respectful to Tolkien. It's got fun gameplay. It's got amazing communities of players, and it is just so true to Tolkien. Even the stuff they make up fits in with the lore, and I usually call legends instead of canon, but legends, because it fits so well. It's just like, might as well, you know, just fits right in the pieces. It doesn't contradict Tolkien. It's just really well done. So anyway, there you can see Weathertop. In the movie, Weathertop was a little smaller than I feel like it should have been, even though I like it in the movies. You know, it's just like a small room on top, basically, like a big room. Um, it is actually an old watchtower of a fortress. The fortress, okay, of Amonsul. So there it is. Weathertop is the fortress tower of Amonsul was the original name of the fortress during the second age of Middle Earth, before the Witch King, you know, kind of attacked, destroyed everything, right? Um, again, I do a lot of lore stuff, and all my viewers can tell you this for anyone here new today. I am, uh, I always give you tidbits of lore, whatever I'm doing, whether I'm the voiceover series, where I'm reading stuff of the games, legends, and stories, or I'm doing tours, I always throw in some lore tidbits, so I definitely like to do that, or geography tidbits of the world so we do that for fun um i do that on community the community tab too we have some fun trivia sometimes and different fun things so there it is there is weather top again i'm not going to jump right to the top but you can see the gorgeous stars actually there's a little hawk right here if you can see my mouse it's really tiny but there's a hawk up there in the air flying right above my mouse I can just see it myself i don't know if you guys have a really big screen you're watching on i am streaming in 2k I try to stream in as high quality audio and visual as I can for you guys and record. I always do that with my tours. Obviously recording is always gonna be a little bit higher quality than streaming, that's just how it works. But um, my streams are still hopefully very nice. That's the goal. I'm quite a perfectionist on that. Hello, uh, what's up Deku? Welcome to the stream. What's up everyone? Such light has been not been seen on top of Weathertop since the days of Elendil. Yes, well said, number 117. Very nice. Are you a Halo fan? Or does that 117 mean something else? <laughs> the Spartan 117, John, from the Halo series. From the games. I don't know anyone. We're not going to get into Halo here. We're here with Lord of the Rings stuff. But anyway, this is a blast. Welcome to the stream, guys, if you joined in. And again, thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to throw a like on there and a subscribe if you would. I appreciate it greatly. And, oh, I just uh, clicked the wrong button there. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is, since we've seen this, I'm going to again teleport back to my fast travel location. And since I've kind of shown you that spot, and we're going to go see the... Rivendell and the troll shaws. Um, I think I'd like to see Mr. Bilbo's trolls, as Sam calls them in the movie. You guys all remember that part? Um, Mr. Bilbo's trolls. Look, Frodo. 
All right, so now, I hope you did, by the way, I hope you paused and did the little thing and read about Weathertop. Um, you don't have to do that. If you're enjoying yourself and you don't want to do that, don't do it. Again, remember, the goal is for you to have fun. I just thought it'd be a fun you? interactive thing if you're watching this later as a little thing you could do. Um, but we're going to now go to Rivendell. Can I take a troll, Shaws? Hold on. Do I have a... Where can I go? Straight to Rivendell because that's my fast travel. So we might be able to backtrack to see Mr. Rebel's trolls. But we're going to go see Rivendell. All right, so this is where you'd pause if you're watching this as a video, read about the description of Rivendell, and then you can see it, okay? Now, cool little thing that I'd like to add in for a fun little fact of this game. Um, this is uh, this is Rivendell. If you come in through the top of the pass to come into Rivendell, all right, um, the music starts playing at a certain point as you come through the high moors, and right when you come out to see Rivendell, it starts playing the theme song. Now, this is something cool that I actually know because um, I have an interview playlist on this channel, which I interview some people, but I've interviewed the composer of this game, Chance Thomas. I actually interviewed him in person in the past too, but for the channel's sake, I interviewed him online and it's freaking awesome with, with our cameras on. And if you guys are really into music and you're maybe you're a fan of the music of this game, I want to check out that interview sometime after this. It's on the Inklings playlist. You see what I did there? <laughs> um, so this is Rivendell. It is gorgeous. I want to show you guys. There's a lot of waterfalls. I wonder why. Here's uh, some of the waterfalls coming down. But as you can see, they're rushing down super fast down the passageway. The trees are gorgeous here in Rivendell. Right oh, they're just so pretty. What's up? It's Gandalf with the golem icon. What's up? And Renish? Hello. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Hey! Everyone popped in. How are you doing, guys? Welcome to the stream. We are exploring Rivendell. And if you didn't know, we have a little event going on if you watch later. I just said this to people watching. But if you're watching as a video later, or right now if you want to tag along, pull open your books. You can pause it if you're watching later or if live. Pull open the books. Read about Rivendell as we explore Rivendell. Now, it might be kind of hard to do live, but mainly for the video later. You can always re-watch later if you'd like to. That is totally up to you. So here is the gloriousness. There's the path that comes down into it, but I want to show you this, and the, the river is loud. But here is the bridge, and again, there's the gorgeous water. There's the last homely house. Excuse the mist from the river. I can't do anything about that. Find yourself another wizard to change the weather of the world. All right, anyway. <laughs> um, there it is, my friends. The last homely house right over there. West of the sea. Or east of the sea, I should say. That's what, that's what I'll run to. Um, so normally you come down this little hill right here, and I'd like to actually go up the hill because I want to show you a better view of the valley. Um, it is nighttime in the game, but you'll still be able to see everything. It's really pretty. So let's just run up to the top real quick here with my horse, and there you can hear the theme song. It's the beautiful, beautiful theme by Chance Thomas right there of Rivendell. So there it is, Rivendell. And again, really, really well done rendition of Rivendell. You read the books. Um, one thing you'll find if you play Lord of the Rings online, that things will sometimes be very close to the movies that you see, absolutely. But it does hold more true to the books. Okay, so the, the video game is very much dedicated to going on the books. I want to get a little bit higher up real quick here, because I want you guys to be able to see this. And then, we, yes, we are going to go in the last homely house, and uh, we will see um, Elrond. And obviously, if you want to look at the definition of homely, I'm not going to do that right now, but I have in the past. It's like kind of like welcoming, sort of, um, the word. There we go. Rivendell. There it is. Now again, it is nighttime. By the way, there's gorgeous sunsets that come through the end of that valley at the end of the evening in the game. Again, the day and night cycle. If I actually look up, by the way, this is really cool for all of you watching. The moon is moving. So just, I'm gonna hold still for like 10 seconds. Just look at the moon and the stars. I don't wanna distract you. 
You guys see it, right? It's really, really slow, but it's moving that direction. Just ever so slightly, the whole sky. But the moon is the one, the sky doesn't really move, the moon moves, because that's, you know, that's how real world works. The game, and by the way, if you're wondering, why does it look like the moon? There are some similarities Tolkien took for inspiration, right? With that, with the, the stars and stuff, so you can't actually find, like, the Big Dipper. Like, you can't, you, uh, this is the Big Dipper. Do you see it? The two of them are behind the mountain, but Big Dipper. One, two, three, four, five, and the other two are right here behind the mountain. Just depends on where you are in Middle Earth. Here we're in a valley, so it's hard to see things. Um, though, boy, is it gorgeous to see beautiful stars in um, in the night sky when you're in the mountains. Oh, if you're someone who lives in like an area there's a lot of lights or city, and then you go out to the mountains and you can see like the Milky Way galaxy, it's gorgeous. Now, I'm a fan of the idea that Middle Earth is a separate world. Some people. Um, and Tolkien doesn't really hardcore make this, but he kind of says, well, it could be, basically is what he says in a letter, that it could be the past of our world, right? And that's up to the individual. But personally for me, I think it kind of ruins it if it's supposed to be our world in the past. I think there's just inspiration that we have, there's similar stars that he put in the sky and stuff. Like maybe, you know, or a different, you know, dimension of our world, right? A different alternate reality in the past. I don't know. So, but that's again every up to every person. But this is just a gorgeous area. You can see the beautiful. Here's the water, by the way, that I was saying I always compliment in the game. It's a little hard to see in the dark right now, but the water, the falling water, is not really done with the new CGI system. Even though it, it doesn't look bad, it's cool how the steam comes off it. But the actual water and the reflections in the water are crazy. It's a lot easier to see in the day. But there you go. You can kind of see it. So you can see the reflection of the bridge a little bit and stuff right there. Just, it's absolutely gorgeous game. So we're gonna go up. Well, let's go say hi to Elrond real quick. I believe Bilbo is also here in Rivendell. Um, at the time of the story here, because they haven't technically gone to the Grey Havens yet. This has been one of these games that I've played since I was little. Because the game is now at the time of this video, it's almost 17 years old, um, and it still man, it looks great for its age. And they've been doing a lot of updates, but. Um, they haven't added the Grey Havens yet, so that's something that's always had a spot on the map that says to Grey Havens, and they've never added it yet. And it's cool because when the game started, we only had this little bit of Eriador, and now we have like most of Rovanian, most of Rohan, most of Gondor, most of Mordor, now we're getting Harad, so it's really cool how time, over time I got to see Minas Tirith, and I wanted to see it like 10 years before it came out, and then I finally got to go and see Minas Tirith, which we're going to see today. So. We're going to get there. We're going to hit some of the more main places in the books. So let's go ahead and look inside. So have you already read about the last homely house right now in the books for Tolkien Reading Day today? Now let's look inside. There's some gorgeous music in here, too. Got some beautiful elven solos. So this is the last homely house. It's a little bit fancier than the, um, the movie rendition, even though I like the movie rendition, too, obviously. By the way, here's, again, the water is so cool. Um, I don't think I could step in this water, but it's got cool animation if you find a regular river. All right, let's go up here. So uh, there's a pretty spot in the back there. Elrond is a wise lord. Oh. Well, uh, thank you there for telling us that. It's good to know. Never would have guessed. <laughs> Again, you guys should definitely check out my voiceover series after this if you are curious. Um, I've improved over the years, okay? We're not that old of a channel. We're almost a three-year-old channel at the time of this stream. Um, we're getting there. By the way, here's the gorgeous library. Um, but uh, I definitely improved my voiceover series and my content over the years. Um, I still like my original videos, but I'm my worst critic, you know? We always are, right? Everyone's our, always our, risk, our own worst critic, you know? My viewers are so wonderful. They're always so supportive, so I appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for watching and streaming <laughs> my streams. All right, here is Lord Elrond. This is how they made him look. He does look a little bit like the Elrond from the, um, 
the uh, movies, which of course I love that actor. Um, he's so he does such a good job of Elrond, and also you know Mr. Anderson. No, no, he says Mr. Anderson in the Matrix, but we're not going to go there. Uh, Elrond. So here's his voice. Dark days are coming. Dark days are coming. He's a pretty. Uh, he's got a cool voice actor for the for the story actually. A strange fate brings you hither. A strange fate brings you hither. The picture becomes clearer to me, Zalin, and I begin to understand what is happening behind the walls of Helicrod. Anyway, so we have a lot of fun with doing voiceover series and stories through these, and I read you through that because that's the one thing that I will say is something that I take away the negative, right? I do the positive for that for this game, is that um, they do have some well voiced over stuff. They do have it. And they usually have a first line voiced over, but they'll have this huge story paragraph of information. And I, what I try to do in my voiceover series for you guys is I, I imitate either the voice actor they have, or they don't have when I make up the voice for a character, you know? And uh, I did a recent Ent voice. So anyway, I had a lot of fun making that voice, and someone left a nice comment on that video. I appreciate it. On my Lotro Adventure. Lotro Tale, Lotro Adventure. Those are my voiceover and, and story playlists um, that we do on the channel. But anyway, oh, Bilbo. I wanted to see Bilbo. Let's see Bilbo real quick. But um, I really have a fun time doing that stuff, so check that out as well if you want it later. It's pretty fun. All right, here's the Hall of Fire. Also in the books, you can read about it. We're talking reading day in the book. But here is the Hall of Fire. It's gorgeous. And here is Mr. Bilbo Baggins. Obviously, older Bilbo Baggins. This is after the, he's given the ring to Frodo. Frodo's been taking it to Mordor. And he's just looking awesome. Yeah, anyway. So there's uh, older Bilbo Baggins. And again, you can also find El Elro here and Elodin. But you actually work with Elro here and Elodin a lot in the stories. So it's pretty cool. Um, so there are events, and if you're, uh, to answer your question, there are events in the game. So, like, um, as you go through the game, um, oh, by the way, it is already, uh, it's midnight, and you can see this gorgeous pur purple glow back there. Isn't that pretty? Gorgeous. But, um, yeah, there are events in the game for different holidays and seasons, but there isn't, like, things that change directly except for, like, at the event locations. They'll decorate parts of Bree, or they'll have a Christmas event, and you go to Frost Bluff, it's called, in the game. It's a certain northern town near um, the mountains, I forget where it is, south, north of Breland, and there's, like, Christmas games, and, of course, I think it's called Yule, Yuletide, because that's more accurate to the what the people celebrate in the in the thing but again everyone you know yule christmas they all say that even though they're slightly different times Greetings. but they're all the winter holiday right um but uh and of course uh, there's more deep meaning sometimes to so both of them right and to of course there's a deeper meaning to christmas too you know the birth of jesus right but without going into all of that right now let's go to rohan it's time for rohan so we are going to start with i think we're going to go to edoras I think I can, can I take a fast travel from here to get to Edoras? Let me see, Rohan. I can go to Helm's Deep. All right, we're going to Helm's Deep. So flip through the Two Towers book, the description of Helm's Deep right now. You can pause it and read that, and then we're gonna check it out. Yeah. Are we seeing Moria? Hmm, yes, we probably should see some Moria. We'll backtrack, we'll backtrack. Let's, let's look at Helm's Deep since I'm already here. All right, so here we are. So that is over there, Helm's Dyke. There's actually a spot in the books a lot of people don't know. There's a battle um, at the Helm's Dyke. It's the ford before you get to Helm's Deep. But here is the wall of Helm's Deep. This is how they made it look. Now, I am per personally very invested in the Helm's Deep of the movies. I just love how it looks. But the Helm's Deep, surprisingly, of both the books, movie, and game, match up pretty closely because the description is so perfect if you just read it in the books so there it is there is helm's deep but the best part about this is you can walk all around it right and there are these things called epic battles which are a type of raid in the game and it sets your level all to the same as long as you're level 10. um so we do those with our kinship a lot so everyone can join in and there's actually a battle of helm's dyke 
and the Helm Deeping Wall. But here's Helm's Deep. It's gore. It's it's a lot more grandeur than the movies. So the the layout's the same as the books in both the movie, but it's a lot grander. So you can see there's a big uh, there's a big keep, the inner keep. Um, these are the uh, the stable areas. Um, this leads up to the wall, I believe. So we can go through here. There's, you can see there's feasting areas, people talking. It's pretty cool. So we just we go through here, and then here is the great deeping wall. Again, there is a whole epic battle at fighting on this wall. We've been doing other kinship. Good job. We actually succeeded a 12-man raid. It was very impressive, everyone. Um, we've been growing our kinship and getting better and better here on the server of Creek Hollow. So anyway, there's the whole wall. And if we go up to the other, uh, there's the Ballista Towers, or um, I believe they're like a type of catapult, actually. But let's uh, go ahead and see here. Yeah, type of catapult. Um, if you look back here to the back, we can look through these things. That leads over to the Glittering Caves. Now, um, in the open world, you can't directly walk into the Glittering Caves, but in the epic battle of the Glittering Caves, where the orcs kind of get through, and you have to fight and defend the women and children, and of course, the shield maidens help too, um, there's a big battle back there that happens. So, the, and then the keep is over there. It's really awesome. Freaking amazing. Um, pretty darn cool area here. Um, there is a way to get up to the, the keep on the back there. There's a whole back area too. Um, in fact, I'm just gonna hop down right here. Whoop. Ow, I just broke my leg. Don't worry, your leg heals in this game within like 30 seconds or up to a minute, depending on how far you fell. In this case, it was only 11 seconds of a broken leg, yes. It's game mechanic, less, less real there, more game mechanic. Um, there is, you can see back there is the opening to the glittering caves into the white mountains back there. Again, Gimli founds a kingdom back there. Now, they don't have his kingdom at the timing of the game, but later in the story. Also, the music just got epic. Welcome to Rohan music, by the way. Here, I'll turn it up. Rohan music. Again, the capital. I'm going to the keep here. Not the capital, the keep. And there's all sorts of cool spots all around here, but what I want to do is I want to walk up in the middle of the key. Yes, you can get there. So let me show you that real quick. There's a vault here. Actually, if you're in game, these are how you get to your stuff in the game. Game perspective, again, not from lore. The game has wonderful lore, but obviously there's game mechanics too, right? Alright, so we go over here. Dude, this music is like rocking. Alright, so here is the inner keep. We can actually go inside. Here is Theoden, King of Rohan. Awesome. And of course, I love the Theoden from um, the movies. <sighs> Such a good actor. He's amazing. Um, you know, where was Gondor? No. Okay, sorry, I'll stop. Uh, now the memes. Dude, the music's awesome. All right, we're gonna go inside here. I'm not sure if it's gonna change the music, it might. Yes. All right, so this is the Great Hall of the Hornbug. Again, far grander than the one we see in the... But gorgeous nonetheless. Look at this place. We got some old tapestries here of um, the battles against the... Um, you know, the Easterlings. And I believe that's supposed to be Helm. Or actually, Helm Hammerhand is here. I think he's punching someone out. These are other stories, too. But I just think it's really cool they have these. Isn't that cool? Man, they're, like, such high quality. I'd like one of these on my actual wall. You know, back here with my helmets. I got Theoden's helmet right here, by the way, from the movie. And yes, I do replica reviews on this channel, too. I have a playlist dedicated to that, Lord of the Rings Replicas. So there's another battle one, and one of these is Helm Hammerhand, I believe. But, um, oh, it's, I think it's this one right here, actually. 
This one in the back, this tapestry behind the, the Lord's chair here of the king. Remember the horn of Helm Hammerhand will sound in the deep one last time for the movie with Gimli? Well, that's when he originally used it during the battles of, by the way, at the time of this, we will cover that this on this channel. The War of the Rohirrim anime movie. All right, that's gonna be coming out. Very excited about that, personally. I'm excited that New Light Cinema is doing it. They have the rights to all the original Peter Jackson movies. I'm very excited. So we'll see how that turns out. But at the time of this stream, a couple months away, but anyway, that's going to be in the past. It's, uh, forget how many hundred years ago it is in the past, but it's pretty cool. All right, so now what I want to do is we're going to ride back outside, go to the horse place. I'd love to see Edoras real quick and show you that spot. Um, and then, did you guys want to see Moria real quick here who are here alive? I want to keep kind of moving through quickly so those of you who are here watching can um, use the little reading thing. Because again, I know a lot of you haven't, you know, you might be checking out all the playlists. So, you know, of course, I'm sure you all want to have 10 hours of content to watch on the Tolkien Reading Day. <laughs> I know we can't all do that, but obviously I, f I always feel like it's awesome to have multiple fun contents to watch. So that's why I try very hard to always bring you guys content on almost a daily basis on my channel here. I am afraid what is happening to these lands. But if you're someone who wants to hear all that, hit the bell when you subscribe. If you don't, no obligation to hit the bell, but it does help. And also, feel free to join the Discord. I usually put a brand new link there that's good for a week, but I mean, I'll double check that it's good for this video for a week. But also, uh, go to voiceoftherings.com, my social media page on there. Always have a, has a good link for Discord. Just throwing that out there. Welcome to join our Discord. Um, it's awesome. We have a great community there. All right, to Edoras, fast travel. I kicked off my remote on the ground for my lights. Whoops, whoops. Well, there's always a technical difficulty in these uh, live things. Oh. Yes, I, I braved doing a live stream on Tolkien Reading Day. Yeah, man, you always get Zolan Iron Shield. If you're having fun, then you're in the right place because I'm having fun. That's one of the big goals of our channel here, guys, if you're new. I'm having fun, you're having fun. That's that's my goal. Um, all right, so here is the map of Edoras. This is uh, in Kingstead, Rohan. So it's right down here. We were at Helm's Deep. We basically traveled. It's a pretty good distance, about a 10 minute walk in, in game, but look, grass. All right, so there is the capital. This is the little town of Edoras. Um, it's a lot bigger than, um, the movie's rendition of Edoras. Also, look, it's a cow. Hello, Mr. Cow. Would you like to say hello to all my viewers? Look at he's a look at it. Look at that little look at him. He is such a happy one. By the way, whoa, whoa, sir, don't run me over. Um, if you guys are a fan of animals too, I do. We do have a mini horse in real life. I do my family, and we also have our two awesome dogs and stuff. So a lot of my shorts videos that I put out are about my animals, so you like animals. Or you can go to my blog playlist, Alotra Life, on the channel. I do a lot of fun, like, adventure things on that. I brought some camping trips on there, dog, if, you, if you're in that kind of stuff. I do a lot on this channel, so, but it's all tries to be Tolkien-based, um, and we have a blast. That's the goal. I always want to make, I, and my goal is to always make you guys the best content I can. Um, I'm always trying to improve, but hold on to what people really enjoy, which is, uh, I think, the positivity and Tolkien content. That, that's what people want, right? We want to we break from the world and be able to chill out and relax. All right, so look at this amazing waterfall. Okay, this is pretty cool. So you can kind of see this has like this pretty little water thing, but this is, uh, the, look at this horse waterfall. It's just so cool. Dude, someone's got to make this in real life, okay? If anyone knows uh, a sculptor, they should make one of these in real life. Just a giant horse sculpted waterfall. That's so cool, isn't it? Also, I ride a Clydesdale around because why not? Dwarves can ride Clydesdales, right? In my blue, beautiful blue armor. Now, this is probably the biggest armor set in the game with these shoulders for dwarves. It's just, it's almost like, you know, some of my friends uh, used to call me the blue whale. But you know what? I love how it looks. 
Um, Lord of the Rings Online armor is very realistic. This is probably like the most out there armor, as in like really, really big. Okay, if we're comparing it to other games like, you know, World of Warcraft or something, that's like everything's ridiculously huge, which is cool. I love that. I'm not against that. But Lord of the Rings Online tries to bring it down to be a little more realistic on that stuff, which makes sense because Tolkien would probably appreciate that. But I do like my big blue armor. <laughs> and I have the uh, Eriador symbol here on my back or the Lonely Mountain kind of stuff. So anyway, there is Edoras. And again, it is still nighttime in the game. Sorry that it's nighttime throughout the game today, but I have tons of other tours that are planned, recorded, beautiful, high definition 2K tours that are in the daytime of the game. So check that playlist out, the tour playlist, the Locher tour if you want it. So there's the town. As you can see, a lot bigger than the one you see in the movies, but makes sense. This is more along the lines of what Tolkien wrote. Um, I mean, they, they were a big, they weren't just a you know, village of a thousand people. There was more than that, so. What's up, Roving Ranger? Love the cow. Oh, yeah, aimless. I appreciate it. Yeah, the cows are awesome. We love cows. Um, for many reasons. All right. <laughs> one one says, as the wise speak only of what they know, keep your forked tongue behind your teeth. We all know we're talking about Grima Wormfam with that one, right? Um, so, again, Edoras, a little bit fancier, a little bit huger than the movie version. And, again, remember... The, the, the movie version wanted a certain feel, and they only had so much of a budget. They couldn't put giant golden things like this with gems set into it, right? Um, obviously, that would have been a lot. The, the nice thing about a game is they can have a lot more creative license to make it look like this. All right? Anyway, welcome to the Great Hall of Meadowset. All right? Your hall is lessened of late. Theoden King. Why should I welcome you, Tanjarf? <laughs> A wise stand, my lord. Man, the movies are so freaking good. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm like reminiscing on the movie right now in my head. So anyway, here is the great fortress, uh, you know, seat of the king. And look at that. Is that, and talk about that, the throne. You know, that's a throne for a royal tush right there if I've ever seen one. Um, here, we're gonna we're gonna totally sit on it. <laughs> uh, they won't mind. I'm like a hero of Rohan. I've saved them over and over in the games, so they won't mind if I just, you know, sit in this nice chair and look fancy for a moment. <laughs> Alright, anyway, uh, we'll continue on. So, uh, now, look at that. Look at how the light streams in. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that a beautiful... I'm gonna go right here for just a second so you can kind of just see it without my camera. And again, when I do my tours, sometimes I will go into walk mode here, which is this one. And, nope, nope, wrong one. This one. And I'll just try to move the camera super slow and give you guys a tour like this so you can kind of just look around. And one thing I noticed, especially with streams, is I need to stop for you guys so it loads very clearly. That's just the end. I mean, it also depends on the quality of your internet, right? Streaming from me. My internet's really fast, but it's not gonna be the same everywhere in the world, obviously, for technical reasons. Might not be your fault, obviously. <laughs> I promise I'm not blaming you. <laughs> um. So, pretty cool. Anyway, I just think it's gorgeous. There's a guy, there's a guard up there. See him walking around? If I turn on floating names with N, you can probably see it, but... You can see he's kind of shining in that window up there. The moonlight, I guess it would be for today, since it's nighttime outside. But anyway, anyway gorgeous. And this is how doors open. By the way, one thing really nice about the Lord of the Rings Online is that, personally, what I've noticed is load times are really low. And a lot of the world is massively open. So, like, you're not teleporting constantly. You can, if you want to swift travel, it'll teleport and do a loading screen. But if you just want to walk from the Shire to Mordor, you never have to see a load screen. I'm serious, okay? There used to be one spot you did back in the day, but then they added Yonder Shire, which is Northern Shire. Which, again, I have a whole tour video of Yonder Shire if you want to check it out. It's gorgeous. Um, the Shire of Yonder Shire is here to the north, and it allows you to go all the way from Thorin's Gate through the Shire, all the way down, through through um, Dunland. If you go through Moria, you do have to load once, 
Um, but if you go down through Edoweth and Dunland, you can technically walk through the Gap of Rohan and go all the way to Mordor with no load screen. You can get all the way there, which is kind of amazing. And in this day and age with a lot of video games making load screens like, Ugh! right? <clears throat> you know. Star says, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna point out the ones. That's not the right name anyway that I said. Um, that's a different game. It's not out yet. Uh, but a lot of them have a lot of loading things, and people have been complaining about that. So that's one thing that's nice about this game, too. Um, and loads are pretty fast in this game, usually. I do recommend the server Crick Hollow. Its population is decent enough that you have lots of people to play with in a fun community, but it's not so big that it causes load times and stuff. So that's good. Um, all right, so now we are going to swift travel back to Bree to take a swift travel. Did you guys want to see Moria real quick? So I think what we'll do is, I will do a swift travel to one of the biggest locations in Moria. Moria is huge. It was the first huge expansion of this game many years ago. Um, it's awesome. I love Moria. I know some people have told me they love questing in Moria, and some people have told me they don't like questing. If you know what questing is in an MMO, it's basically where you get quests from NPCs, or non-player characters, and then you walk around and do those quests, turn them in, and you get rewards, and you get XP, level up. All right. Greetings. That's how it works. Um, and again, I do this game where I teach people how to play this game. And I also do it where you can just have fun watching me do like tours like this. You don't even have to know how to play, right? That's the goal of this channel. I want it to be either helpful for you if you want to play or just so you can relax and watch, you know, depending on what playlist you're watching I make, the content I make. That's why I do such defined playlists for you because some people like to watch my tours. Some people want guides. Some people want my reviews on things. Some people want my voiceover series. Whatever you want, right? That's I want it to be fun for you guys. That's my goal. Um, I'm trying to remember how I can get to Mordor. I mean, not Mordor. Uh, Moria. Here, real quick. I'm trying to... Um, what do, where do I have to go? Do I have to go to... Oh, you know what? I know what to do. I'm going to teleport to my kinship house because I have a thing I can teleport straight there. That's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm doing some things to make it very quick for you guys. A lot of times you watch my series on voiceovers, I'll go Baruch and I'll like pause it if it's not alive, if it's recorded my series videos, and I'll say Kazad and I'll be back. Baruch Kazad, you know, it's the Dwarven war cry Gimli says. Um, this is our kinship house. So we actually own this, our group. Um, there's a big beautiful house. I'll just show you inside real quick. Let me, let me just real fast. It's home of Voice of the Rings. Just like our YouTube channel, our kinship is called Voice of the Rings. And again, is connected in some ways, other ways. We have officers that lead stuff too, that, um, and we'll sometimes we'll do other things too. But this is our kinship house. We have a tree right in the middle because it's cool. And uh, we have some pretty music. I got some fish on the wall that I caught and I taxidermist in Bree. But yes, there's a fishing system in the game. And I stuck them on the wall. And this is probably my least impressive fish. Yeah, but this one, this one is impressive. I caught this one up in Forge Hill or something. I forget. It's a long time ago. Um, I think I caught that one. Um, so now we're going to... I have a map here of Moria. But don't worry. I'll show you the real map in a minute. There's a pretty painting of uh, Weathertop. All right. Anyway, I'm done. A little show and tell. All right. Continuing on. So this thing right here, I've got a little teleporter. I should be able to go straight to Moria for you guys. I think we'll see the 21st Hall. That's where we're. So if you want to pull out your books and read about the 21st hall in the books, let's see. Um, Moria, where are you? I'm pretty sure I can go to Moria, right? Can I? Oh, yes, I can. 21st hall. So the 21st hall in the movies is, I love how they made it look in the movies, okay? But here we are. This is Moria. All right, this is the map. These are all big locations. We are in the location of Zel, um, Zelim Melek. It's a very fun word to say. Um, this area, and we are in the 21st Hall. So if we look around here in the 21st Hall, if you just read about it, if you unpaused or whatever, um, it's going to probably be in the Fellowship book, right? Um, these are the giant towering structures that we see in the movie, but in the game, they put a little more gold on them and stuff and make them a little fancier than the movie. The movie, they were just pillars of stone, which looked freaking awesome. You remember when the goblins come out of the roof and then they start running from the Belrog, right? In the movie. Um, that's technically this room they're in here, the 21st hall. 
but it's absolutely gorgeous. And here in the story of Lord of the Rings Online, we're retaking Moria with the Iron Garrison. Okay, so it's not Balin's company. Balin's company did die, which, of course, we have to see that room. So now you may want to do your pause and read about the room of, uh, right, um, what? The room? Oh, gosh. The Chamber of Mazabul. Okay, that, I think that's it. Where uh, they found, you know, Balin's tomb and Gimli's very sad in the movie. That is right over here. Okay, that you go right through this door to the north arch of the 21st hall and you turn right and that's this room right here now again M moria is huge it just happens to be very close to the 21st hall very convenient for our stream here all right the chamber of muscle bowl or as a joke that i say on my channel channel the chamber of muscle bowl. anyway it's an old joke from our <laughs> you know the game um return to moria i've been playing that here on the channel i have a playlist for that as well so here it is a little bit bigger, a little bit fancier than um, the one we see in the movie, again, but close to the books. So here we have the tomb, which, by the way, has an identical look to the one in the movie. And the reason for that is Tolkien actually drew us what it looked like in his book. You have a book that has an artist version of it, up to what Tolkien drew. We actually know exactly what it looks like, because Tolkien literally drew it out with the words. The tombstone so that's kind of cool what's up blaze robbins welcome and by the way i believe this is supposed to be ori you actually play as one of these characters maybe i don't remember if you play as ori or not but um i think this might be the character you play as and you actually die i think you're supposed to be Ori or something riding they are coming boom boom they are coming and then you know they they break in and fight you and you basically it's a flashback you play as the character for like two minutes in a quest see the flashback of what happens it's cool lord of the rings online does a cool job of doing flashbacks in history and stuff and well you, you'll you'll enjoy it if you ever try the game out in that way too um again you can watch my series and you'll see some of that anyway i'm pretty sure that's in my lotra tale series somewhere i don't remember which episode so don't ask me we have a lot of a lot of them <laughs> lots of fun content for you to check out so anyway again the 21st hall glorious i'm actually going to walk down this because i want to show you one thing real quick and then we'll continue on. Um, Moria is massive and it is just so big. Also, if you notice, I'm now riding a goat because you can't ride horses in, in Moria. Look at this, look at the scale of this place. And this isn't even the biggest place. Look at, the, look at that, look at that face. Look at that. We're now entering Durin's way. Got some big, by the way, I have an entire lore video called Did the Dwarves Live in Darkness? And that's an entire lore video on how the dwarves get all their resources. And they know they don't just live in a pit in the ground. A lot of people think, oh, they, I would never want to be a dwarf and live. No, no. After you know about it, you might actually consider. <laughs> so they have water systems, air systems, light systems with giant mirrors that bring light in. They have an entire garden. All right. Entire garden, which I don't know if I can get to quickly, but there's an entire garden section up here see i'm at, i'm right here in the, the stone hall and also there's this cool thing where you can actually see durin's stare remember how gandalf fought the belrog all the way from the deepest point in the world to the highest point of the mountain well that was durin's stare he fought him all the way up the, the, the spiraling stair and in different parts of moria in the game you can see durin's stare and and the way they make the map in this game here it is there's durin's stare you can see it goes all the way up into the top of the mountain, and you can see it goes all the way down. All the way, look, oh, I don't want to fall down that. I have a bad habit of falling down things in this game, um, if you watch my videos. So yeah, it's it's way down there. Hello! Did <laughs> someone drop a rock? Um, anyway, uh, so I don't want to fall, so we're going to go back. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and the way, oh, I found, uh, I found them. So anyway, uh, this is, uh, Floyd and DeWitt, the explorer. This is a fun little deed. You can find them all over Middle Earth. Um, they like to explore things. They're NPCs, obviously. Um, non-player characters. So if you actually look at this map real quick, and that's all I'm going to say, we'll move on. The map actually, these are the lower parts. The middle ones are the mid parts and the top one is the highest. So they kind of go like this. Okay, so if you're looking at the map, they go like this, right? So the deepest point is actually foundations of stone where the stair starts. And you can see the stair at different points throughout all the height. 
even though you walk through to get to them because they like lower. It's, it's very clever how they did it for the game. All right, anyway, we've seen that. So now we're gonna move on to the next thing. So hopefully that was fun. There's a lot of other cool spots in Moria. I have entire videos. I can't go too long because I don't want to like bore people who are just trying out, checking out the channel kind of thing. But I have whole in-depth things and reviews of areas and tours and lots of stuff like that. So now we're back in Happy Bree again from Moria. And we are going to go to the next spot will be, we're going to jump to the Return of the King book. And I think we're going to go to Minas Tirith. I think it's time. <laughs> Roving Ranger. Moria looks amazing. Yes, it does. It's, it's amazing. Uh, let me catch up real quick for the live stream chat here. If you're watching as a video, I'm going to ca catch up with you guys here. Um, 107. Also, are you going to count the 200 steps? I believe the entrance of Moria. Oh, yeah. No, they really do have like a massive staircase at the entrance of Moria. And I, we're, we're not going to go there. Um, uh, yes, it is Tolkien Reading Day. Since uh, Blaze Robbins in the live chat brought that up. Uh, Tolkien Reading Day started, I just looked this up because I wanted to make sure for this stream. It started in the year 2003, so it's been a while. What is it, 21 years now? We've been celebrating it. Um, and it started because, I'm not sure who started, didn't really say who, but obviously it started because the 25th of March is the downfall of Sauron in the books. And it's to celebrate Tolkien's life as making his wonderful creation, right? Which is awesome. I think it's so cool. It's always fun to have something that a huge group of people love because Tolkien is for everyone. Obviously, everywhere on the planet has a dedicated shelf to books of Tolkien. Of course, I have a dedicated shelf right back here to like 170 books of Tolkien. But we're not that, you know, I might be a little more fanatic on Tolkien books than maybe the average, you know, reader. Um, but that's not a bad thing either. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, I hope you guys, if I'm your host and guide of Middle Earth here, or host of guide on Voice of the Rings, you'd hope that I would, you know, know some things. I do, some things. I don't know everything, though. Gotta be humble about it. I don't know everything. I what still learn need? stuff, too. Um, but I do know a lot, especially about this game and about the lore of Middle Earth. Um, so, don't worry. If you subscribe, you are going to get some knowledge out of it. You know, God willing. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go to Minas Tirith. But uh, we're going to go to Minas Tirith, the main gate. Um, I'm going to go to Midsummer version. There's two versions of it. They do this in the game. There's dimensional versions, depending on what part of the game we're in, okay? Midsummer is a lot prettier because it's kind of like after the battle. The other one is like before the battle. Um, actually, the regular the regular gate is... Min the Midsummer uh, is the celebration after the battle. So it's really pretty and everything's gorgeous. Um... So here we go. Yeah, Midsummer was a good choice. So there's a big celebration after the battle, and you can see here's Minas Tirith, the city of kings. And the first thing you guys are probably saying if you're moviegoers and love the movies like I do, you're like, why is the wall black? Why isn't it white? Well, real quick lore point. The walls of Minas Tirith were made of the same material as Orthanc was, or Isengard Tower. Um, and I think they originally were made with, um, I don't know if it was the dwarves, but, um, was it the dwarves? But I think it was Numenor that set it up, and it's, it was a type of, like, obsidian super hard stone. Now, obsidian in real life isn't, like, the strongest material, but in Middle-earth, this particular kind is very, very strong. So, Mi Minas Tirith was all white, except for the outer first wall was a black obsidian dark color, and it looked really cool against the beautiful whitewashed city in the background. So, there you go. There's some lore for you. I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, we'll walk in here to Minas Tirith. Here's the Great Gate, which was rebuilt by the dwarves with Aragorn in the Fourth Age. So, the dwarves helped rebuild this with Mithril, mind you. They're like, yeah, you know what? Those trolls broke through a little too easy. Why don't we use Mithril this time? They'll never get through again. <laughs> All right, here you go, guys. Welcome to Minas Tirith, the gorgeous city. And again, I hopefully you paused and read about the city, and then we'll explore it a little bit together. I know I skipped a bunch of things. 
mind you guys, I could have spent five hours meticulously going through every spot of the book. Because you can pretty much go to every spot almost in the book on the way to the, all the fellowship to the trilogy. Um, but I know that a lot of people here are watching live or watching this video later. You guys can go watch my other content if you want to see other parts of it. Because I want to make sure it stays to a enjoyable level, right? You know, I, I, I get tired too, even though I love this stuff. I could go for hours, but you know. <laughs> so anyway, it's gorgeous. Minas Tirith is amazing. They did such a good job. Um, we are gonna definitely go up the levels. We're gonna do the Gandalf, you know, with the beautiful music where he's like, make way, make way. And he's like going with Pippin up to the top. So um, you could technically take swift travels up to the top, but I think we're gonna ride up to the top because it'd be more fun. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, yes, the city is a maze before the update. <laughs> it's true. Um, so to get up, you can use fast travels at the front to get up to the different levels. But if you actually look, there are, if you follow the path, you can actually see where they go up. Um, though, I, this one doesn't have the things like the other map does. Interesting. Now that I look at it, there's usually little spots that shows you where you can go up. Needs your aid. Here it is. You can see go to all the different levels. So we can just hop to the different levels too. Uh, Minas Tirith Swift Travel Regular. Here, let me show you the difference real quick for fun. I'll show you the other the other version here. So I believe this is Minas Tirith after the battle. So this is this is in between the so the music changes too. This is the same spot all the flowers were, but you can see you know there's the destruction and leftover. That's Grond, right? Grond, Grond, and they blew open the gates. Um. But you can see, uh, this is after the battle. So, uh, you can see, uh, here's, uh, Lord Prince Imrahil and all that stuff. So again, that was in the future. What we were, we just, we just jumped to the past. What is this? Back to the future? <laughs> um, so you can see this is the old gate that got kind of kabonked by Grand. Um, but as you see, if I show you the map, this one, see, they've got the little, the little passage things. You can, shows you where you can go up. Um, so basically you go over here, you can go up to this level, and then it goes up here to this level, and then you go over here to this level, and then over here to this level, and it's a winding windiness, right? Um, it's pretty cool though. By the way, it's four dawn, so it's about the daybreak's about to come up, which is really cool. So, um, I don't know, Are you guys live, do you guys want to see it probably rebuilt, right? You want to see it after the, the midsummer? It's still cool to see it like this. And there's another version too. There's before the battle, which looks really nice without the flowers. Um, I can show you that one too, but it's kind of neat that they have multiple versions. Let's see here. Um, to Minas Tirith before the battle. Yeah, see, they got these horses you can click on too. Um, so now we're in Old Anorian. This is the one that's just on the field. All right, got some pretty music, but it's gonna change again when I go outside. I got so lost, Blaze says. Oh, I know. I, I, I can understand that. So here it is before the battle. So you can see everything is not broken and ruined yet. So this is the classic look of it. But everything looks really scary and the sky is all terrifying. And that's because technically Sauron has not been defeated yet. You can kind of see the Nazgul out there. See the Nazgul flying over out there. So the Pelennor Fields... So this is the same spot again that had the big party right in the front gate. But uh, this is pre the battle. Scary music. Yeah, see there you go. You can see the ashes falling. See the ash? So this is a... Uh, this is scary. Yeah, anyway, yeah. it's uh, And then that's Oskilianth over there. The great city. You can see all the fires from the war. We're being like attacked. This is like right before the, you know, it's probably a day or so before the battle. They're coming. It's very, very scary. But anyway, uh, we're we're gonna go back to the midsummer version, and then we're gonna explore the the levels. But anyway, it's really cool though, isn't it? Cool to see the court. And again, you can explore the place is huge, but I want to explore it after midsummer. So let's see. Let me hover these horses. Which one is midsummer? That's uh, the Onslaught Fields, the Threshold of the City. Those are different battles. To Minas Tirith after the battle. Do we have Minas Tirith Midsummer by chance? Out here or do I need to like, go inside? Let's go to after the battle again. I just click this guy and he teleports me in. Whoop. 
So again, they do that as a dimensional thing. That's not something they do a lot, but they do that with Minas Tirith because there's so much in the storyline that happens. And also they do it with like the fourth age stuff. Like they change the Southern Gondor to King's Gondor because it's like, it's the rebuilding of Gondor basically after the war. So the sky isn't all dark and scary and stuff. It basically changes the dimensional time. It like kind of shifts the time, which is cool. It's a cool idea because it makes you feel like we succeeded, we killed Sauron, you know? Now we have to help rebuild Gondor, you know, and see how beautiful Gondor was before this scary black and evil death clouds were everywhere, right? So, yeah. So anyway, thanks for being here, everyone. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I appreciate it greatly. Um, so anyway, hopefully you're enjoying yourself if you're watching this as a video or here live. Um, it's pretty fun. But let's go explore through, uh, I don't want to go to the after the battle, I want to go to Midsummer. Wait, does she have Midsummer? How may I help you, friend? There it is. Back to Midsummer. So it can be a little confusing, so just click on the either the Stable Master or, or hover those horses with your mouse and you can kind of know which one if you're new to the game. So again, there's Grand, the great battering ram wolf. You notice it's an actual wolf? Did you see that? Probably should have looked at that a little closer, but that's okay. Another time. Gotta, gotta keep your, uh, wet your appetite for more in the future. <laughs> but, uh, I'm pretty thorough on my my tours if I can be. And of course you can join us on Crick Hollow and walk around yourself. Alright, so let's go ahead and explore the city. The day is coming up, the sun is coming up. So um, it's just before the dawn. So hopefully within five or ten minutes the, the sun will break and come up. But let's go ahead and explore how pretty everything is. Alright, that I think my I'm still kind of loading it a little bit, so I'm going to wait a second for everything to load. Okay, there we go. I'm noticing a little bit of a thing. There we go. All right. I think we're good. So, you can, again, the wall is like an obsidian, the front wall. Oh, I thought I could go all the way up to the top, but I guess I can't right here. Oh, that's okay. Look at that, though. Oh, wow. Look at that shot. Wait, wait, wait. we got to go back. Look at that. Whoa. You can see all the different levels. Anyway, so we're going to go up there right now. Hello, Beth is in the stream. Welcome. Beth is one of our officers in uh, Lord of the Rings Online, our kinship. So you can see everybody celebrating. The Gondorians are so happy that we are victorious. This is after Sauron is defeated. That's why the music is so uplifting and happy sounding. They're very, very happy. We're going to move through the city streets here. Again, Minas Tirith is absolutely huge. I'm looking for the first ramp to go up to the next level. So, and they're different levels. They're called different things. The top one is, the t second to the top is the Sage tier, but I'll, I'll show you the names in a second. But as you can see, the, the town is huge. I believe this is the, there it is. All right. Go. Ooh, hold on, I'm gonna close one thing in the background here. Whoop. See if that kind of helps a little bit. With, uh, yeah, that helped a lot. That must have been uh, causing something in the background to happen visually. All right, there we go. Oh, way better. I'm glad I checked that. Um, so again, you can see the sky is not evil anymore. It's regular little wispy clouds, and the sun is coming up, and we're gonna have a beautiful view here in about five minutes. Um, Woo. Look at that. So we are now entering. So if we click on this guy, he'll actually tell us. These are troublesome times. We have indeed. the the stable tier, craftsman tier, um, high stables, the uh, players tier, and the sages tier. So there's a lot of different ones. I think that one's a joke on us as the player too. Um, I'm gonna go to the sage tier. I'm just gonna take a swift travel instead of going up every single thing because otherwise it's gonna take us five minutes to get to the top. No one's got time for that. <laughs> Using our legs? What do you mean? All right, so here we go. We're near the top. Now we have a really good view of Middle Earth here. All right, so there you go. And another thing, just like I pointed out with Helm's Deep, you can see, see this broken wall way out here? They had another wall in the book. It was an outer wall that protected the farmlands, and that one got attacked first in the books. Which isn't in the movie, right? They don't show that part. Though, technically, there's a skilly. You can only see part of it because the rest of it's not quite loading all the way over there. 
Um, they have updated the loading distances in the game, which is fantastic. That's why you're able to see, like, those mountains with all the trees all the way and stuff. It's really cool. But look at that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that just the best? I love the flag animations, too, with the wind blowing. It's cool. Hello, Bort. Welcome to the stream. But yeah, it is just absolutely gorgeous. So again, this is the Sages tier. You can see some more of that black stuff woven into the structure, the, the obsidian, whatever it is. Um, and if I want to get to the top, I think I have to go the other way. Dude, I love the music. It's so happy. And a lot of the original main themes in this game are done by Chance Thomas, the person I interviewed here on the channel. Um, but there are a couple other composers that have done stuff too. Fanta they're all fantastic. But uh, Chance Thomas made the, some of the classics. I remember one thing I asked him, I'm like, why does your Shire music sound so much like Howard Shores from the movie? And he goes, I never even heard Howard Shores music, he said at first. He said, well, I think we just drank the same Tolkien Kool-Aid. Which is a really fun comment. <laughs> And, oh, there we go. That's what I wanted to show you. See, there's the port. Remember in the movie where, um, uh, you know, they're like, get off your ship, sea rats. You're late. The orcs. And then, you know, Aragorn does the swervy jump down and Gimli and Legolas. And they're like, oh. And then the whole, you know, disarm me and wipes them out. Of course, actually, that was before that. But that doesn't matter. Um, you know, the orcs get wiped out. So that's the outer wall was part of the city of waterway that goes off to the ocean because again if you look at the map you can see this waterway actually links down all the way to the ocean right Pelagor, by the way is a huge and massive city too that you can go to it's pretty cool and you can also go to Dolamroth all of the other like fiefdoms of Gondor that's a word ahead I don't use very often fiefdom um yeah look at that cool so we're up on the seventh or the sixth wall I guess because there's the thing in the top we're gonna go to and the Sun's coming up so you can have wonderful view and see everything <laughs> you would have thought the Numenorians would write it down yeah well I mean look at how they lost all their palatures during the war they probably lost a lot of their other knowledge too it's a good it's a good point though about how to do make the stone, but I'm pretty sure the dwarves a uh, mithril gate was stronger anyway, because mithril is obviously the hardest resource in the in the lore. Up we go. So again, hopefully you read about this in the for Tolkien reading day. Did a little pause or something. If you're watching this as a video later. Oh, look at that! It's so pretty. So now, welcome to the top tier. There's gardens up here. Again, this is more for the royal court. Um, I, actually, this is, yeah, this is the master's tier or something it's called. And then we go up here. We'll get to the top and see the gorgeous, beautiful tree of Gondor. Well, they're, they're growing a new one. Because in the books, if you remember, in the movies, they make it look like the tree just blooms again. Which was good because they had to cut out more of the information. But in the actual story, um, here it is. Oh, gorgeous. I have a great spot. All right, we're going to look at it right here like this. There we go. The capital of Minas Tirith. A lot fancier than the movie. But uh, I love it. Um, in, the, in the books... He goes up to the mountain back there and he finds a sapling after the other tree is completely dead. Um, and they plant it, right? Well, guess what? Here's that sapling. So that'll be the next white tree of Gondor. And you got the guards guarding it next to the waterfall. Absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's so fun. You can go to these small little corners. And look, by the way, since we're here, here's Frodo and Sam. Hello, guys. We'll do a little bow because no one, you know, they don't bow to anyone. We bow to them because they saved the world. All right. 
course, Zolan in the shadows also helped save the world. Right, Zolan? Zolan said yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, so, Zolan is me, but sometimes I talk, you know, like third person. <laughs> um, so, it's just neat. You can go to all these little side corners and stuff, and of every little spot. You can always find some little intricate spot. Here's an even higher vantage point. You can see the whole city below us. All the different levels. And again, in the books, it's technically even bigger, right? But it's still cool you can see this. And back there, I don't know if you can get to the actual... You might be able to get to it? I don't remember. But I do know there's an actual instance back there during the battle. It's pretty cool. Oh, it's a hard instance, though. Instances in this game are dungeons, if you're familiar with other lingo from other games. Um, basically, like, it's called Instances in this because it's story. Oh, look at this. They're all playing. Technically, if I turn down the music and the in game music, you can hear them. You hear them? They're all playing. And then I can turn back the in game music back on. So if we go in here, the Tower of Ecthelion. The gorgeous, beautiful Tower of Ecthelion. Here it is. Far fancier than, uh, look at the floor, man. Look at the marble floor. You can see the ceiling and the floor. Again, the reflections in this game. Oh, look, you can see me in the floor. Anyway, it's gorgeous. There's the roof. Let's uh, go on walk mode here so it... Uh, let me turn one thing on in the background here real quick. All right. There. We'll do a slow walk. What's up, BN? Welcome to the stream. So anyway, this is after the battle. This is the Great Hall. Also, this is the theme song for Lord of the Rings Online, pretty much. You're listening to right now. I mean, the game looks amazing. I mean, does, does it not look amazing? I, I think it looks amazing. So, don't let anyone tell you this game doesn't look good. <laughs> and again, it's an art style. I understand. It's They're not going for realism. I talk about that a lot. Um, they're, they're, they want real-ish, but it's an art style. They're not trying to make it look like real-life visuals, right? Um, but it's... You couldn't get the same quality of amazingness if you're trying to make this look like a real life graphics. It just this looks so good. I just love it. And there's some towers. Oh, I just love how this game looks. And also, it just looks so much better nowadays. Here is uh, Aragorn, or King Elisar, King of Gondor. I'm pleased you could return to my city in time of peace. My friends, Zolan, my friend, I am pleased you could turn to my city in times of peace. With far war safely behind us, we cannot lower our god over much. It is true, but Mithrindir and the Council of Gondor both assume we, me, <laughs> sure, excuse me, me that the threat of further war is at low ebb for now. My mind, therefore, turns from material matters to those of the heart. For a day long prepared is nearly upon us. So anyway, there's this whole thing. I'm not going to do this right now, but anyway, it's kind of cool. There's a whole quest. So anyway, there it is. I am I am good friends with Aragorn, my character in the game. So it's going to let me stand right here. There it is. This is a expert planner of the wedding. <laughs> I love the rose petals falling. Such a pretty effect with the rose petals all over the floor. Yeah, BN, exactly. BN says, I don't know why people ever say things against the looks. It's really one of a kind to me, 100% agree. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep, totally. Yeah, I, I think it's because without getting too into it, because I talk about this a lot in, other, I mean, in the past. I think it comes down to some people just have a certain... They want their games to try to look 
be the newest games and look as close to real life as possible, right? Like where most people when they game, they're there to, it's an escape thing for fun, right? And it's, are they like the art styles, right? Like no one plays Pac-Man, you know, really for the art anyway. <laughs> it's not a 3D world, it's like for the gameplay, right? Um, but people like how it looks still. I think that's the same thing. Same thing with like even World of Warcraft. Obviously, I think this game has a little more realism looking than World of Warcraft. They went for a more cartoony look. But still, like, I mean, it looks great. Like, I, I still think World of Warcraft looks good, too. This is an art style. People are there for the way it looks. And I think Lord of the Rings Online just brings to life. Look at that sun, by the way, coming up. Look at that, like, just the effect, the blinding effects. Isn't that cool? See, and look at the rays. See the sun rays? Coming up over the thing when I move. Isn't that awesome? Great. The lighting in this game, the water and lighting in this game are fantastic. And again, a compliment to its aging and also their updates they've done in the last couple years. And Lotro slowly done updates. There was a little bit of a rumor that they were saying they were going to redo the engine all together. I don't really want them to do that. That's, that's never going to happen. That was a rumor. Uh, but they have been doing graphical updates constantly. Like, I noticed as a longtime player, I'll be like, that whole area looks new. Like if I walk by somewhere I hadn't been for a while, because it is, they'll update an area with textures. They'll update a graphical thing. They'll update this, they'll update that. Lighting spot, you know, water, things like that. Certain uh, fog effects. There's a lot of like fog effects in swamps now and things. Pretty cool. Not to mention the audio sounds in this game are cool too. All right, so here is the here it is, guys. Here's a beautiful seat. And uh, the crazy... Gi There's the fields down there. Again, Oskilionth. It doesn't fully load Oskilionth. It's actually much bigger. It goes across the river. But you can see the mountains. The sun is now extremely bright. Ah, my eyes. Um, El Elven jump. No, those are intrusive thoughts. Stop it, Elven. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, but... There it is. This is where they have the celebration right in the movie with all the people and they bow to the hobbits, right? After. This is the big tower spot we're on. But anyway, you guys, there is so much more that I could show you of Middle Earth. Um, I think we're going to probably end it there today, my friends. So I hope that you enjoyed. Um, it was super fun. I'll blow my little uh, trumpet here. there. So anyway, I will probably sit in this seat. Can I get to the seat safely? Wait a second. Why can't I get to the seat? What's going on here? Why can't I get to the seat? Is it blocked off or am I just, is it just glitching out? Normally you can sit in the seat. Aha, I did it. Aha, there it is. Okay. There. All right, my friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed. If you were here new, checking this out. Happy Tolkien Reading Day, my friends. Um, me and Zolan sure had a nice day. And uh, hope you did too. Watching this as a video later for Tolkien Reading Day or just later this week. And uh, again, feel free to join our Discord. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. What's your favorite place you saw in this video today or stream? And... Uh, Yeah, oh yeah, the story, its graphics are amazing in this game. So, but anyway, I love the music. It's so pretty. It's so happy and upbeat. Yeah, the west of wind, you can hear the wind because we're way up on, you know, on top of a freaking tower. Look at that. You can kind of see that way down there. But, um, just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. So much fun. Again, I am your hosting guys on Iron Shield. Thank you to our couple friend channels that I posted pointed out at the beginning for putting the playlist together for Tolkien Reading Day. So much fun! Hiya! And again, check out my other content! Thanks to my wonderful Patreons for their support! And, uh, subscribe ones there if you're watching later. And I got links to stuff down there, all my social media stuff. Free things. And if you ever want to... you have the inklings or want to help support the channel on Patreon, you get some extra videos. But no obligation. Alright, my friends. Thanks again. Have a great week to you as well, my friends watching here live. And I will see you guys in the next episodes and live streams 
a voice of the rings. Baruch Hazad! Kuzad, I menu. And now, to finish up, just because it'll be fun, um, our character can't die anyway. So, uh, let's do a Denethor! Even I don't think he did that in the book. Wee! Ah! Look at that beautiful view. Oh. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. I'm fine. It was just, I was just incapacitated. Okay, when it comes to lore in this game, you can't, um, you can't die because, uh, it's, it would break the lore, right? You can't resurrect. Um, there's only a few characters that do that, right? So you get incapacitated. But anyway, it's a perfect, because now we can see the Frankie here. Okay. So anyway, there we go, my friends. Middle Earth. Uh, again, join, join us on the, on the, the wagon here and, uh, subscribe. And, and join our join our fellowship here on Voice of the Rings. I will see you guys in the next ones. Stay happy, my friends. Baruch Hazad Kuzad, I bet. All right, there we go. We'll see you in the next one.